In today's video, I'm going to go over several different sections of Cricut Design Space to help you better understand and help you with your designing process. Hello everyone, if you guys are new, my name's Liz and in today's video, I'm gonna go over several different sections on Cricut Design Space. I've done a video in the past, but that is several years old at this point and Cricut Design Space has changed a little bit. I will link my original video down in the description box because there are really good tips and helpful information in that video. And if you are looking for some things that are located on the left-hand column of Design Space, that will be in that video. But for today's video, I'm gonna go over the the top section and the right section to help you guys understand everything that you can use and utilize when designing with Cricut Design Space or with cutting things out with your Cricut. So that is what I'm going to go over today. If you guys enjoy these types of videos, let me know in the comments down below or if there are other questions that you guys have that weren't answered in the video, make sure that you leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to each and every one of you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in to today's video. Now when you open up Cricut Design Space, this is what you are going to see. I'm just going to click on new project. Now if you saw my last video or if you haven't seen my last video, I'll link it in the description box below because it does go over almost all of these left hand buttons right here. The only one that isn't there is this phrases tab because this is a new tab that Cricut recently came out with. But if you want to get more in details on what these items do on this side, I will refer you back to that video because that video goes into detail on each of these buttons and how they work and things that you can do with them. If I was to show you all that again, this video would be super long. So watch that video first, then come back to this one and I will show you some other things that you can do on the top of your screen and on this right hand side of your screen. I do wanna to touch really quickly on this phrases tab just because this is a new tab and I didn't mention it in my previous video. So all this is is just, you know, just like your images tab where you're gonna find a bunch of images, this phrases tab is going to give you a bunch of phrases and you can search all sorts of different things. Like if I type in the word family and click that, a bunch of different kind of family phrases pop up, a bunch of things that you can use that are already pre-designed for you. So if you're not somebody that likes to make your own designs, these are perfect because they're all just pre-designed. All you gotta do is click on them and then add them to your canvas and then it will pop up on your canvas right here. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is everything that pops up for your text settings. Basically anything that you want to change with your text is going to be all right here. So I just typed in love lives here. You can just click that text button, have it pop up and then write whatever you want right in there. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is the font section. Now you can click on this and scroll through all of these fonts and choose whatever font you want. You can do all fonts. You can do system fonts, which are the fonts that are downloaded on your computer or you can do the Cricut fonts. Now, these are all the fonts that come with the Cricut Access subscription or ones that you do have to pay for, some licensed ones that um, you can buy. But if you want the Cricut Access fonts, you do have to pay for their subscription. I want to say it's about $10 a month and you get a whole bunch of fonts, a whole bunch of images, a whole bunch of phrases, lots of things that you can use. If you are using this for any kind of work or you know you are making and selling items I definitely think it's worth it to have this subscription but it's totally something that's up to you because you can download your own fonts and images onto Cricut Design Space as well so that is totally your call so I am just going to go on here and choose a font that I like change it to something different and you can see that the font changes. Now, another thing that you can do is over here, this section called style, you can make it regular. There are some that come up where you can uh, make it into a writing font. So let's see if I can get one that pops up this writing. So here's a font that gives you several different styles. You have regular, you have bold, you have bold italic. There is also just plain italic. 
or you have your writing. And this makes it so that you can use this with your Cricut pens if you want to have this written out with your pens rather than cut out in vinyl, then you can change it to that as well. Now the next section is your font size, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can make them smaller, you can make it bigger, Another way to change your font size is these arrows right here. You can click and drag that and make your font bigger or smaller as well. Then the next section is your letter space. Now this is the space between all of your letters. You can click the down arrow and make those letters all smushed together or you can click the up arrow and make all those letters further apart. The line spacing is going to be the spacing between each of your words. So if you want that spacing to be smaller, you're going to click that down arrow until you have that where you want it. Or if you want it super far apart, you're just going to click that up arrow and keep doing that until you have as much room in between each of the words as you want. And then the next section is alignment. So you are going to click on that and then again, kind of like any Word document or anything else that you see when you're using words on the computer, you got your left, center, and right. And that does exactly what it says, makes it a center aligned, right aligned, or left aligned. Now this next one is only gonna work with one word at a time. So I am just going to click my text button and then type in my word and click on curve. This is going to curve your word for you. If you drag it to the right, that's gonna curve it downwards. If you drag it to the left, it's going to curve it upwards. Just dragging that little circle along until you have it however curved you want it to be. And then this advanced button is an ungroup to letters, ungroup to lines, ungroup to layers. So really, I don't use this because you can ungroup right here on the right hand side and you can ungroup. So I don't really touch the advanced button very often. I just use the ungroup and the group. Now coming up to the top line, this is your undo and redo button. Pretty self-explanatory there. This is your operations button where you can click on cut, pen, foil, score, print and cut, or guide. And this is going to be your operation. Do you want it to cut in the vinyl? Do you want to draw with a pen? Are you going to be using your foil? Do you want to score it? Do you want to do a print and cut? Or do you want to do a guide which looks like this? Which essentially is an option if you want to see what a project is going to look like. So for example, if I grabbed a shape and I did a square, let's say I have a sign that I want the word love to go on to. I'm going to switch this back to a cut since that's not going to be a guide. But if I had a shape that I wanted to see what my sign was going to look like with the word love on it, I could just measure that out to the size that I want it to and then click on operation and guide. And then it's going to show you how big that love is going to look like inside that rectangle. This is not going to cut out. So if you use the guide option, just remember that that is not going to cut out at all. Now this is pretty similar to what I used to do when I was when I will measure out my signs and my words, uh, a lot of the time when I'm designing in design space, I'll grab a square or a rectangle and use that as a guide, essentially, and figure out how big I need my words to be in that square. I'll take the measurements from the sign that I'm using, make the square that size, and then fit my words inside the sign. So just like this, and so now you have a little guide option. Instead of using the square, so you forget to delete the square, then you have that square cut out. This is going to make it so that you don't have to cut the square out without deleting it. Or if you forget to delete it, you won't have that rectangle cut out right there. You can just see what the word love looks like inside the size of the rectangle you need. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions about the new guide option, leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you on that. Now the next section is your select all section. You click that, it is going to select everything that you have on your canvas. You can also deselect it 
which also just deselects everything that you have selected. Now your edit button is going to be cut, copy, and paste. So if you select something, click on edit, you have the cut, copy, and paste options. I don't really use this button either just because you can either click delete on your keyboard that you're using or if you want to copy and paste it, all you have to do is come over here and click duplicate and that will duplicate your image. The next thing that I'm gonna show you is offset. When you click on offset, it is going to do just that. It is going to offset whatever you have selected. So you can change the size if you want it to be smaller offset, more detailed, you can do it like that. If you want it to be wider and bigger, you can do it like that. But I'm gonna show you what you can do with that. So once you have the distance between them, you are gonna click apply. And then you can see that now you have two little pieces. So the thing that I think is fun with this, let's say you have a project that you wanna layer. Uh, some words on you want to have an offset on some words you can do this you can have some yellow vinyl cut out or you know whatever color that you choose but you can have that vinyl cut out you can have your word cut out and then you can layer those two on top of each other so they will cut out and you can layer them just like this which I think is really fun so that is what the offset button does. So this next section is going to be your align section. Now let's say you have three or however many different items, different words, different images, and you want them all nice and aligned. What you can do is click and drag and select all of those words. You can click on align. You can click center horizontally. That's going to center all of your words. You can also do the distribute vertically, which will distribute all your words vertically. So they're all nice and even in between each word. You can also do center vertically, which will center your words vertically. There's a whole bunch of different ones on there. Align left, center, align right, align to the top, align vertically, align bottom, center them all together, whatever it is that you are wanting your words to look like. However you're wanting them aligned, that is what the align button is for. And then you can also do distribute horizontally and vertically as well, like you said before. So this will take care of all of your alignment needs. The arrange button, you can click on that. You can click bring to front, bring forward, send backward, send to back. Again, I don't really use that arrange button very often because you can just right click on that and you have all those options right here. You can also come over to this side on the right hand side and you can click and drag them. And if you want, you know, the guide to be in the front, you can make that to the front. You can just kind of move them around where they go. So I don't really use that arrange button very often. Now here is your flip button and that's another really simple and easy one that you've probably seen before. You can flip it horizontal, you can flip it vertical, just how, whatever it is that you're wanting to do, you can flip all of your words and images right with that flip button. Now your next one is the size. So a couple different ways that you can change the size of your images or words. You can again, click these arrows, drag it really big or drag it really small, or you can use the up and down arrows, or you can also highlight and write whatever numbers that you're wanting in there. Now this lock is going to make sure that everything stays nice and even. So if the width changes, the height is going to change as well to match the width, whatever, you know, the distance between the two, you know, you have five inches right here and this is 1.431. It's going to stay nice and locked and even together so that no matter which way I do it, everything looks nice and proportionate. If you unlock it, which can either be by this button right here or this button right there, then you can move it around, squish it together, and it can all become very disproportionate. But this is sometimes nice when you have really specific measurements that you want to do and you can move them around to however you want them to be, whatever measurements you need them to be. Um, so that is why you could unlock it and lock it. Now the next couple buttons, this is the rotate button. You can use the up and down arrows to rotate it 
or you can click this little circly arrow and this will rotate your image as well. If you need to get it back to just completely straight, just highlight that and type in zero and then that will have it all nice and straight for you again. And then the last section on the top, you have your position. This is where it's at on the Y and the X axis. You can see here as I'm dragging it around the canvas, those numbers are moving and that's really the easiest way to change your position just by clicking it and dragging it around. But if you really wanted to, you could use those up and down arrows and have them move around as well. So that pretty much sums up the top portion of your Cricut Design Space. I want to show you the right side and show you some things that you can do with this as well. So what I'm going to do is start at the very top. I'm just going to highlight this word right here, click ungroup. And now each of my letters are ungrouped and they are free to move wherever I want them to be. Grouping them is just going to keep them all together so while you're designing them they're all nice and stuck together and you're not having to move things individually but if you wanted to move a letter or take out a letter you can ungroup them and do that. So you can just highlight them, click on group and now they are all nice and stuck together. The next section is your duplicate section, which I mentioned before. You just click on that and you can duplicate whatever word or image it is that you're wanting to duplicate. The next button is your delete button, which I just always use the delete on my keyboard. But if you want to use that one, that is there as well. Just click that and your image or word will delete. So this section right here is everything that I have on my canvas. So for this one, you can see it says group because I had ungrouped it and regrouped it. Now it's showing them all in a group, but it's each of my individual letters for here. And that is all in one section right there. This one is going to show my square. This one is going to show lives and this one is going to show love. So this basically just shows everything that you have on your canvas. Now at the bottom section, you have slice, weld, attach, flatten, and contour. Let's start with slice. So one thing that you can do with slice, um, a lot of times if you find an image that you want and you want something cut out of it, sliced out of it, you can use the slice option for that. So for example, project a couple weeks ago, I needed this windmill, but I didn't want the stand of it on there. I just wanted the blade portion of it. So I added that into my canvas and I am going to slice off those bottom stand pieces on the windmill. So what I'm gonna do is take that windmill and I'm gonna take a square that I got from the shape section and I am just going to drag that and butt it up to that bottom blade as far as I can until I feel like that is where I want it to be. Now what you're going to do is highlight both the windmill and the square and that slice button is going to appear. You can click on that and then if you click your windmill and drag it over, now that piece is sliced off and cut off and no longer there. Now here is a good example of the contour button. Since I have sliced it, this bottom portion wasn't sliced, so it's still connected to that windmill. So to get rid of that portion, you can click on contour and then click on that bottom portion of the stand and that will delete out the bottom portion of the windmill stand, which is really nice for these kinds of DIYs when you're trying to slice and take things off. That slice and contour button are really helpful. Now, another example of the contour, you can click on that. Let's say you don't want this circle in the middle, or maybe you just want the outside of the windmill to cut out. You want kind of a silhouette of it. You don't want all the blades showing, so you could go through, click on everything individually or you could click on hide all contours and make sure that everything is grayed out. The only thing that you should have left is this portion right here and you can see now you just have that silhouette of the windmill. Now the next section I'm going to talk about is weld and this comes in handy for a lot of different things but I find that I usually use it mostly for text and for cursive text. So I'm gonna go through and click on a font that is cursive and that needs it to be weld together. So I have this word right here and I zoomed in so that you guys can see, but you can see in between each of these letters, you can see a line, there's the one right there, there's one right there, 
one right there, one right there, and one right here. If you were to keep it like this, when you cut it out, your Cricut is going to cut each individual letter out on its own. Instead of this being one seamless word, it's going to cut each of these lines out, which is what you do not want. So to fix that, you are going to highlight your word, click on weld, and it will weld each of your letters together. Now you can see that those lines are gone. So now when it's cutting, it's just going to cut everything nice and smoothly and as one entire word instead of each individual letter. So welding is perfect for when you have things that you want it to all just be welded together, stuck together, and not have a whole bunch of lines cut out that you don't want. You can weld those together. Another example, I'll take some shapes. Let's take a triangle. We can put the triangle right on top of this M. If you want that all to just be welded together and become one piece, you can highlight those. Click on weld. Now you can see it's not going to cut the triangle out individually. It's going to cut the triangle out with everything else. It's all nice and welded together. Now one thing to keep in mind is that there is not an unweld button. If you want to undo the weld that you've done, you've got to click the undo button and that's the only way to get that done. Now let's move on to attach. Let's say that you have two separate words and you want it to cut out just like this on your machine. You've got your time right here centered exactly where you want it. You don't want to have to go through and center it again after it's already cut out. So you want it to cut out just like this. You are going to highlight it, click on attach, and that is going to keep those together. When you go through and click on make it, you will see that the time is right underneath the summer, right where we put it. If that isn't attached, it will look like this. Now it just puts on the mat to try to fit it as best as possible and it doesn't have it where you necessarily want it to be. So if you have a design and you want that design to all stick together right where you want it, right where you have it on your design space, click attach and that's how it will cut out on your mat. Now the last button over here is flatten and that one is mostly used for when you're doing print and cut. If you're making stickers or anything that you're printing out and then cutting afterwards, I will show you how you can use that. So let's say I want this time to be a sticker. So what I'm going to do if I want the word time printed out on my computer and then I wanted a rectangle cut out around it, you can click on shapes. I'm going to grab a square and then just size it to my word. I'll also right click and then send to back and then my time word will appear on top. So when I'm making a sticker, I'm going to take that rectangle. I'm going to make it white because I don't want this to print out any color. So I am going to put my time on top of my rectangle. I am going to click on flatten and then click on make it and then you can see that it has that line that goes around the word time. That is where it is going to cut your project out. So that's how you use the flatten button. That is primarily what I use for making any kind of stickers, print and cut items so that when you have an image or a word that you want print and then cut you can flatten them together so that the shape that you're wanting it to cut out can cut out and then you have your image or your word printed out. If you want a more detailed tutorial on stickers because that is a whole entire other thing, let me know. There's so much more that could go into it um, when talking about design space. That's just kind of the basic rundown of it. But if you want more in-depth tutorial on it, definitely let me know in the comments down below. But I think that is about it. Everything that I have covered from the top hand section to the right hand section. And then in my previous video, the left hand section, if you need any other help or if you have any other questions or if you want another kind of tutorial or video, let me know in the comments down below. And then if you want kind of a beginner friendly basics project from start to finish on design space and then cutting it out how I set my machine up how I do everything with the machine let me know in the comments down below and I can definitely do one of those for you as well 
And that's it for today's tutorial. I hope that this was helpful and helped you better understand how to use Crooked Design Space. If it was, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave and I will see you in my next one. Bye.